Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to talk about this Reddit post from a C Sharp developer veteran with 20 years of experience giving some advice. And usually I'm very skeptical about posts like this because do you really have 20 years of experience or do you have one year of experience 20 times? This is a big distinction that usually I make when I speak, especially with all the developers because development is moving so quickly and some all the developers get stuck in the old ways and they don't adapt. But after reading this post just a little bit and taking a look at the first two tips, I think this person really knows what they're talking about. And I haven't seen all of the tips because I wanted a genuine reaction on this video. So we're going to learn together. And if there is bad advice here, then this video isn't going to be uploaded. But if you're watching this, then probably what this person had to say was good. So let's take a look at what they have to say. So I've been a software developer for 20 years. I have been a developer for 16 to 17 years myself but I think they're talking about a commercial developer, which for me is nine years, uh, and they're taking a lead at a company who deals with payment services, which is what I used to do before I stopped to do YouTube full time, uh, based in the UK, which is where I am. So maybe I know this person because there are not that many payment companies in the UK. Uh, so they're writing this from this perspective. They have experience in that relevant field and they give some background. I don't really wanna take a look at the background because it all looks good and typical. Someone who had a dad or a parental figure uh, who brought something at the house and then they got exposed to programming because of that. So what can I say to new and aspire C Sharp developers who want to start out and get a job? Here's a bullet pointed list with no particular order. You don't need a degree and this person does not have one. And as a hiring manager myself, we did not really look for a degree. You would have a portfolio, you could have uh, done a bootcamp. The question is, can you actually do the job? The degree can get you the the interview, the degree can't get you the job, in my opinion, and at least in my experience as a senior engineering manager. So you have to actually prove that you can do the job. And on the portfolio aspect, don't just clone a GitHub repo or just fork a GitHub repo and change a few things and assume that's a portfolio. Actually build something, find the problem you have and build something and put that into GitHub. Don't just copy paste code. You don't really learn by copy pasting code. You get paid to copy paste code later, but to start with, you actually need to write some. So coding is probably 50 to 60% of the time, the rest is meetings. Absolutely true. And I would say probably coding as you go more and more senior, is less of that time. Maybe it's 40 and maybe it's 30 because then you just chat with stakeholders, we chat your product, meetings, stand up, Agile, which I absolutely hate. Well, I hate what it turned into and there is a video coming talking about Agile and Scrum in general and how it all went wrong because I think it went massively, massively wrong. But yeah, don't expect to become a senior developer and write code all the time. You can still kind of see that. You can still see developers who just write code. But in my experience, that is usually contractors on fixed contracts. So three months, six months, senior contractor comes in, all they do is write code, but even then they still get involved into product and meetings because their experience is just very viable on that front as well. And yeah, I do agree, you will never find a job that is pure coding ever. You're expected to be part of a team and you will understand the whole project, the domain, there's so, so much to do outside the code. I would argue the code is the simplest thing you will actually do at the job. Dealing with people and with product and with stakeholders is the most complicated thing and it's a skill you will need to learn to master. Then show that you care. How do you do this? By writing good code that is readable and maintainable. You will assume everyone does that, but actually they don't. And some people actually try to code job security into their code bases. I've seen this actually in my teams in the past and it's quite sad when you see it. Now, this is a skill in itself. I say to juniors, don't write code for business or write it for other developers. And that goes the other way. Business doesn't care about your code. They don't give a damn. If you write clean code, bad code, readable code, maintainable code, they don't care. All they care about is the product. Developers care about the code. And you have to code within the constraints, the time constraints usually, 
that product imposes to you. So use a good scout person rule and try to leave the code base better than you found it. You will always find messy code bases. How many times do you join a company and you see like a messy code base and you're like, oh, I can't believe they did this. I see this over and over again. Yeah, people like clean code. Uh, some people don't like clean code. You don't have to use clean code. Just try to be pragmatic about your approach and write maintainable code that is easy to read and easy to understand. And you might wonder, how do I do this? Don't try to get too clever with the code. Reading code should be easy. Then write tests, for God's sake, please write tests. Yes, integration tests help, but nothing consolidates code behavior better than unit tests. I disagree, not with the consolidate code behavior statement. I agree with that. But I think that if you are to write some tests, at least in .NET, because of how simple it is to do, write integration tests. They will cover a bigger spectrum with less code, and they will do it very, very well, very efficiently, very, very fast. We have so many tools nowadays to write incredibly easy and simple integration tests. Yes, you need to know how to write unit testing too, because the tool set and the methodology can be adapted to integration. And ultimately, you write both integration and unit tests. But if you are to write some, in my opinion, write integration tests. Then you don't know everything. Stop pretending you do. This is the first lesson I got when I first started in 2015 with my first professional job here in London. I had this mentality that I knew everything. I got into the job. I thought everyone is worse than me, even senior developers. And I very quickly realized that just shut your mouth and listen to people. You are nothing. You know nothing. You are always learning. I'm learning now on a daily basis. So how could I not be learning when I just first started? Stop pretending you're a know-it-all. Listen to the other person. Active listening is very important as well. Try to train that into your meetings and into your discussions. Try to meet other people halfway and be honest with yourself and admit you don't understand something. Don't try to hide it and don't try to assume that something works a certain way. That's the biggest mistake I ever made in my career. And ever since, I double and triple check before I go very confidently and say, yeah, that's how things are. Be pragmatic. Yeah, you want a perfect engineer solution. We get that. Uh, but business wants something that works. Business wants a product. It's so, so right. It's incredible how I agree so, so much with this post because usually when veterans give advice, I do disagree quite a lot with them. But this looks like it's a passion that has really, really worked on high-end code bases and teams, real big companies. And yes, be pragmatic. Do not try to make the perfect engineer solution. Go out of budget, go out of scope. Product doesn't care. They want something that works. And especially when you join a company, don't try to say that this code base is bad. In fact, what I just saw from the next tip is if you're new, don't criticize the code base. The biggest mistake you can make to become unlikable immediately is that this is the shitty code base that enabled you to get a job. You don't go into a house and you say the house is bad. Respect it because that's what pays the bills and then try to find ways to improve it as you go. Absolutely agree. Incredible advice. In an interview, be honest about your abilities. Apply for a job role you genuinely think you can do. I remember when I went for my first job at a small marketing agency into my next job at a massive clothing company here in the UK. I thought I had it. I, I thought I could just join that company. And I remember the hiring manager asking, do you know TDD? Or I think it was, do you practice TDD? And I was about to answer and he goes, be honest. But I remember like freezing there and I said, no, I've never practiced TDD. I, I know how to conceptually, but I've never done it. And the person goes, good. I like that you're honest. So be honest at the interview. It will only work at your favor. And at the end of the day, if you don't have a skill that's required, well, that's good because you could join a company where you couldn't perform. Could you learn it on the job? Maybe, but not every job is for every developer. Then learn about common design patterns, strategy, repository, etc. I would go as far as Singleton where we have a free course on Dome Train on how you can learn the Singleton pattern. And we actually make courses now for every other design pattern there is. It's very, very useful to know these very common design patterns for any programming language. Uh, then since C Sharp is object oriented, learn what solid is and how to apply it. You don't need to use it everywhere and be dogmatic about it. I love that they mention it all the time, but it is true. Don't try to say, 
this is not single responsibility, this is not open close, this is not like you organically apply those practices. Don't try to impose them, try to just use them and utilize them. There's a difference. Then learn a cloud tech, AWS, Azure, and uh, GCP. Uh, we actually have a free course for C sharp developers on AWS. Again, on Dom Train, sign up, get it for free, yours to keep forever. At some capacity, you definitely need to use the cloud at your job. So please learn one of them. AWS is the biggest. Azure is the most applicable for .NET developers. GCP uh, is a cloud provider that um, exists. And then lead code is a game. Don't worry about it. I agree. Don't even look at lead code for C Sharp, really. And then learn Git and branching strategies. Absolutely agree. They stop here, but I think this person genuinely has some amazing advice to give. They've actually been in the game for a long time and they've worked for genuinely great companies. I'm assuming a lot here, but based on what they say and what I've seen, that's all I can say. This advice is golden. I'm going to put a link in the description. Try to live by it, especially as a more junior developer. You can utilize all that and become a better developer. But now I wonder from you, what do you think about this? And if you're a veteran developer as well, can you leave a comment down below giving some advice to junior developers? Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.